Welcome back to Tackle Tuesday. On a Saturday. The only Tackle Tuesday that might be posted every week, depending on how ambitious I am, but absolutely never posted on a Tuesday. Why is that? Because it's my channel, I get to do what I want. All right, let's get into it. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And as most of you are probably aware, we're kind of on lockdown right now. Um, I have not been out in the entire month of March to be able to go fishing. I was actually supposed to go to Grenada Lake this entire week. And uh, yeah, we're on lockdown, so. It's kind of disappointing that I didn't get to go to Grenada Lake and chase after some three pound crappie, but what are you gonna do? So instead, I'm here inside talking about tackle. And I wanted to start off kind of some cool things that I got in the mail recently that I think might help you uh, enjoy time on the water, or at least prep for gear. The first thing, line spooler. PC Fun sent me this, and uh, I actually was, I've seen a couple videos on it. Looks pretty darn cool, easy way to spool up your line. So I have the PC Fun Honor. This is the original Honor series, 2,000 size reel. I'm actually going to be going on the Mississippi River tomorrow, chasing after some walleye and some smallmouth bass. 10 pound braid, eight pound fluorocarbon leader. Let's spool this thing up. Actually, it comes with two pieces like this, and uh, it just slides right in. No screws or anything, just slides right in like that. Clean. It's got a reel seat on the bottom. And then at the top, there are these, uh, I guess, pincer things. And they come with two sizes of, I guess, um, cylinders that go through the holes of any line spool. I've actually spooled up a couple reels already. I don't think you need them. Basically what I did, since I'm using, I'm gonna use 10 pound braid, get these pincers, spread them apart, one side fits in the hole like that and the other side fits like that it's got this bearing at the top and there's a little screw up at the top you can see that right there you can loosen it or tighten it depending on if you're using a spinning reel setup or a bait casting setup when you're using a spinning reel setup they recommend that you keep it loose so that it can actually spin like this and that is to prevent line twist. Really tie your uh, line to your reel. And you just start reeling. And you can tighten or loosen that bearing at the top. And that is supposed to prevent line twist. And there you go. Line is spooled up. I'm gonna attach a eight pound fluorocarbon leader to it. Cause I'm fishing for some walleye tomorrow and some smallmouth. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool little, little deal there, line spooler. I know there's a bunch of other cheap models out there, but this one, I think I think it retails for like 20, 20 bucks maybe? I'll have to look it up. I will post it in the link in the description. You can check this out. Uh, huge thank you to PC Fun for sending me that. Thanks guys. All right, next thing for tackle that I think uh, might help you out this spring. A lot of you probably have been experimenting with where to put your soft plastics, whether it's in tackle boxes like these, um, there's another one, or you can get yourself one of these guys. Do I have a second one? This one's a little less full. So these are the uh, Berkley um, soft case pouches, and it's these big Ziploc bags like this. This is my uh, bass fishing one, or my bigger soft plastics, but as you can tell, you can fit quite a bit of soft plastics in one of these things. These are all my crappie plastics. I actually haven't broken them down by color and by uh, brand. So I was actually in uh, the Ozarks three weeks ago now. Got a ton of these crappie monster ones. By the way, if you're looking for a uh, some soft plastics at a discount. Flopping crappie, all caps, all one word, you get 20% off crappie monster plastics and their net. So huge thank you to crappie monster for letting my audience get 20% off. So this is actually my ideal setup. I know it looks kind of like a mess, but this is the best way that I've found to store plastics. When you store them in things like this or something like this, 
The problem with these a lot of times is if they get stored in your boat or the garage or something and during the summer it gets really hot, uh, the plastics will melt to the bottom and then it's a pain in the butt. Some guys really like to store them in these hard cases, uh, but this, even though it looks like a mess, this is the best way that I've found to actually store soft plastics. This is the, I believe it's the Berkeley binder is what it's called. Um, but yeah, it comes with a bunch of these Ziploc bags and you can store a ton of plastics in here. Actually got jig heads stored on this side. And then uh, they got zippers in the front. You wanna store like hair jigs. Speaking of hair jigs, this is the other one that I found recently. It's made by Gamakatsu. I believe it's a 3600 size box. It might be a 3500. But it's got these slits in the foam for any type of jig. I, I keep most of my hair jigs, marble jigs in here. Um, there's some other stuff. Got my Pico, Fearless, Fearless Jigs. SK, appreciate you. He sent me a bunch of these. Actually, this guy right here. Save this guy right here. Yeah, that guy saved my Texas trip to Canyon Lake. This single jig. There's slits in the foam and you basically just slide the hook right in there. And it sits right there. See these slits in the foam? I don't know if you can see that very well. But they just slide right in there. Keep a bunch of them. Nice and dry instead of keeping them in like a pouch or something like that. So, I will link both the Berkeley bag and the Gamakatsu. I believe it's a 3600 size box. Um, if you guys fish with a lot of hair jigs or even just your regular jigs, this is awesome. Uh, keeps your jigs dry, specifically for hair jigs. And uh, yeah, you don't have to deal with hooks getting caught everywhere. The last thing that I got in the mail, this is from PC Fun as well. This is a uh, tackle backpack. And for those of you, actually, let me grab my camera bag. For those of you that actually do some filming, I know I talked to actually some people this morning that were asking about GoPro settings and GoPro polarizers. Um, but for those of you who have camera gear, this is your pretty typical basic camera bag setup. Looks like this. Um, great for camera gear, not great for tackle. On the Texas trip that I took to Lake of the Pines, I was fishing in three different boats. So on that Texas trip, I brought a few bags of tackle, but then I was in this, I had this for all my camera gear, and it sucked because trying to hop from three different boats with all your camera gear and then your tackle basically in my pockets um, wasn't fun. So I asked Peace of hey, this looks like a pretty cool setup. It's actually insulated. It is all foam padding insulation, and it's got a divider. It's got a dividing piece in the middle right here that you can open up, and it's like a big backpack. So you can open up all the way like a big backpack. It's got this flap on the bottom. You can keep your tackle storage trays in here, just like that, or you can stack them in this way. But specifically for me, I needed something that I could keep tackle stuff right in here and then I use the divider to separate it out and I'll keep my camera gear on top. So if you do film a little bit and you want to throw GoPros or something in the top and then your tackle in the bottom and you're fishing out of your buddy's boat is a great setup. If you're a bank fisherman this is awesome because the entire thing is insulated you can put some drinks or something in the top put your tackle in the bottom. Um, it's got a hard covered case for your sunglasses on the top. I don't know. If you're, if you're a bank fisherman, or you, uh, you use your buddy's boat a lot, you hop in your buddy's boat a lot, this is pretty much ideal. It's got a ton of, a ton of room on the sides. I mean, pockets everywhere. So instead of uh, using this backpack to hop in people's boats when I go film, because normally when I go to Illinois or Missouri or Texas or wherever I end up, I'm not using my boat for the most part, and uh, this can't hold tackle. This one can, which is awesome. Um, fits about these size of tackle trays, I think. Yeah, those ones fit right there. So I believe these are 20, 2400 size, maybe 2200 size tackle trays. So I thought this was a pretty cool setup. I also, if you uh, like camping, 
maybe you like camping and you want to store ta fishing tackle and just camping gear in here. It's a pretty sturdy backpack. It's pretty nice padding on the back too. So, huge thank you again to PC Fun for sending me this. I will link that below. As you can tell, I'm really bored and I need to just get out on the water. That's why I'm filming this video because I got nothing else to do right now. I was supposed to film actually this morning, um, but it's going to be downpouring in about less than an hour here, like really downpour. And uh, normally I'd fish in it, but if I got to film the camera gear and hardcore rain, doesn't mix. So, appreciate you watching. This has been Tackle Tuesday, the only Tackle Tuesday that's absolutely never posted on Tuesday because it's my channel, I get to do what I want. I will link everything in the video description below, the backpack, the uh, case, both the hard case and the soft case, and of course, the line spooler. You can check all those out. Don't worry, fishing videos will be coming up soon. Um, I actually got one more from Lake of the Ozarks that I didn't think I caught enough fish in the video, but I got no content, so that's coming at you. Appreciate you watching, we'll see ya.